What happens if I change this capacitor for a bigger one? What if I add another one in parallel? What if I add more? You will find out very soon. Quick story. First you need a power source. You can use a 9 volt battery for example. I decided I will use a solar panel because why not? Everyone uses batteries so that makes things more interesting. Then you need these resistors. If you need it here is a color value table and also you can find a resistor calculator in the description in case you don't want to mess with these colors. Next we need this small capacitor and this one. Don't worry if the value doesn't match exactly, it should still work. Also get some larger capacitors to experiment with longer pulses if you wish. LEDs. Don't forget the 555 timer. And finally you need a breadboard. And that's everything you need for this circuit. Let's get to building. Okay, I'm done, thank you. Now take a look at the LED. It should be flashing with a frequency of around once per second, also known as 1 hertz. This may seem boring at first, but keep in mind that you can connect anything you want to the output. For example, a motor. You could use PWM signals, pulse width modulation, generated by the 555 timer to drive it faster or slower. Many people use expensive microcontrollers for this purpose, for example Arduinos, but in reality, as we just proved, you can simply use a 555 timer with a variable resistor. We can achieve the same thing with this simple circuit for a fraction of the price. Now you can understand why this component is so important for electronics. It is probably the most popular IC in the world. There are plenty of use cases for the 555 timer, and I'm sure you can come up with something you could use it in. For example, if you or your friends like making music, you could build a simple synthesizer with it. You could use it to generate specific frequencies. Then you could tune it to match the frequencies of notes in music. For example, the note C2 has a frequency of 65,4 Hz. Now back to electronics, to modify the timing on the board, you need to play with the resistors and capacitor values. Wiring capacitors in parallel increases their total capacitance, and wiring resistors in series increases the total resistance. In my example you can see the total capacitance of the capacitor array is increasing as I add more of them. This means they store more energy and take longer to charge. That is why the timer turns the LED on and off at longer intervals. I think there's something very satisfying about charging capacitors with a solar panel. I don't know. Here is a diagram of how the 555 timer works. What we are looking at is a circuit using the 555 timer in a stable mode, just like the one we built. Note that you can also use it in monostable and bistable mode. Here is the pinout of the 555 timer. If you would like more details, I also left you some links in the description. That is all for this video. If you liked that, check out my other videos and leave a like, comment and sub because it helps my channel. See you in the next one.